Hey, welcome back. And as you can see, today we're in the workshop and we're going to be working on the tractor that I just bought, the John Deere 855. And we are going to be changing fluids and filters today. Just wanted to briefly touch on this though. And uh, I don't know how many of you have been out and, and serviced your own equipment or if you do service your own equipment. But uh, the price of oils and filters, in my opinion, is absurd. It's very expensive. And I can't imagine paying somebody to do this as well. So I'm glad I have the ability to do these changes. I just wanted to go over real quick. I plan on changing the transmission fluid in that, that tractor, the engine oil filter, the transmission filter, the front gear oil or gear lube and the engine oil and I've got all the proper quantities I didn't over buy anything on these and I just wanted to go and show you that for every one of these particular items it came to two hundred and sixty eight dollars and sixty two cents just for the material alone so sit back and uh I know this ain't going to be the most exciting video, but hey, it's a video that uh, maybe somebody out there will learn and get some ideas and not be afraid to try some of maintenance on your own because Lord knows the price of stuff right now is kind of got to push you into learning and wanting to try to do some of these things on your own. We've got the uh, new to me John Deere 855 and it is a 1991 model year. Uh, kind of wanted before I get into doing the fluids and also I know there's a lot of you guys that like that uh, there's got to be a better way. Little segments that I have in uh, some of these videos. Why just changing this oil on this machine I do have a, uh, a tip, a hint, a idea for you guys to look into and there is a better way not everybody knows about these things but I guess I learned about them or the need for one when uh, the kids and I got uh, into personal watercraft and we do the, our own maintenance on that as well so we have to uh, change oil on those units and if any of you know a personal watercraft, wave runner, jet ski, whatever you want to call it, you can't drain the oil out of the bottom of one of them because they end up in the bottom of the hull and there's no way to get them out. So I'll show you that there's got to be a better way here shortly. All right, so I've got the, uh, the side panel off of this and they're actually very simple. Uh, they've got these little spring, you, you flip the, the lever down, and I don't know the technical name for them, but I know that the, they were used a lot on older vehicles, older equipment, things like that. But it's, uh, you flip it down and uh, slide the panel off, and there's one back here as well. It's just basically a slot that these go in, and then there is a post down here and a post down here. And really, the panel got two holes in the bottom to accept those posts and then you just put the pins in up there and there pretty darn simple um, vehicles like this made back then are actually very very easy to work on but either way one thing I wanted to show you is this oil vacuum pump and when I say there's got to be a better way this is a better way in my opinion I used this two days ago on my pickup truck when I changed the oil in it. 
and I'm going to use it on this tractor and I use it on our, our wave runners and I guess when I looked at this and I, I found this on Amazon and they make a million different uh, styles of these things they make them in different capacities and all that and this is a OEM tools manual fluid extractor and it holds two gallons or eight liters what you do is you take and you use this pickup tube and you stick it down into the dipstick all the way down until it gets to where it bottoms out down into the uh, oil pan or the bottom of the oil pan but it does not and I repeat it does not eliminate me from pulling the drain plug out of the bottom well you say how does that how does that uh, make it easier or why is that better first off when I vacuum it out I can vacuum it out I can walk away as it's doing its thing it creates some kind of suction or a siphon and will pump out or vacuum out the oil in the machine I don't have to stand here and babysit it I don't have to watch it I can get started on that and I can move on to something else while this is uh, vacuuming out the oil the other thing is when you take one of these machines whether it be your car a tractor a lawnmower or anything you normally to do it correctly should heat up that motor to get that motor oil nice and warm to get everything so it flows and drains easy so when you've got that hot oil and you get that last thread turn and then that oil runs all the way down your arm and not only is it hot and you're screaming because it's hot now it's down to your knuckle and into your armpit i had to purchase one of these for our personal watercraft so I utilize it on all the other equipment where I can as well it just makes it so it's not a mess I don't have that stuff running down my arm when I drain it I don't have a big splash I don't have a big puddle I also didn't want a 12 volt system because I didn't want to have to deal with extra wires additional wires to hook up to a pump off the battery and everything else it was just a lot easier to give this a handful of pumps get the prime started and let it drain into that so let me go ahead and get that in and get it going. So I've got it where it's pulling oil now. Get that vacuum on the system and just sat, sit back and wait. Got my pan under there. I'm going to go ahead and break that nut loose and drain whatever is remaining in there. Now, granted, this is the first time I've ever changed oil on this uh, because I just purchased it a week ago, not because I've never done an oil change. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and drain that out. And when you put that vacuum hose into here, you don't really know where it goes when it ends up in that pan. So you don't know how much of it you're going to get out. Um, so it's going to be a guess to me as well how much comes running out of here so we're going to go ahead and uh, like i said undo that bottom drain nut and see what's left in there okay here's where it runs all down your elbow and arm well that's not bad just a little bit running in there. I don't even know if there's enough to fill the bottom of that pan up, but we'll see once it's done draining. Well, that went on nicely, rather it's clean and smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this thing down, and I need two hands to do it. All right, and I always like to clean off the end of the filter, get any oils off of it that uh, were on it from my hands. 
and I'm guessing most of you know what I'm doing here. But uh, gonna write the uh, date and hours on this filter so I know when it was last serviced and I know none of these other filters had a date. Get yourself a, a nice uh, paint pen and write the date on it. Got the engine all filled back up with oil and everything's back on tight, no leaks. And I also put the type of oil that I use, the 15W40. That way if I need to ever add oil to this thing, I'll know that it was 1540 that I put in there instead of 1530 or 10W30 or whatever other brands and flavors there are out there. But either way, Put that on there where it's legible when you go to fill the oil you can tell what it was and if you ever needed to top it off again it's easy to tell so another thing that i want to try is i'm going to do the uh, transmission oil in this thing and change it out and the drain plug for it is right here and there is four and a half gallons in this and i know that i can't get a five gallon bucket under there so i'm going to go ahead and try my pump here and I'm going to put it down the uh, dipstick tube here and see if I can't pump some of that oil out. See if I can't get most of it out so then when I do go ahead and pull that drain plug, I don't have a, uh, a pan that won't accommodate or handle the four and a half gallons. So I'll try and contain or collect most of it in that. Uh, I can at least get two gallons with that. And I could always empty that into my... Uh, uh, recycle jug and then come back and do it again and see what I can come up with so I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't get that down in there and uh, vacuum some of that oil out you can call me stupid yes, you can call me sheep you can say I So I've got everything I could pumped out. I got about, uh, oh, almost two full of those. So now that I've got everything pulled out of the dipstick tube here that I could, I'm gonna go ahead and break this uh, drain plug open and see what else we get to come out of the back of this thing. Not sure whether it's gonna come out in a hurry or whether it's just gonna run out, so. We'll move the jug back here and see what happens. Hopefully I've got enough pan for whatever's left. Sure don't seem like much is coming out. Let's... All right, so now we're underneath the tractor here, and we're going to go ahead and get the uh, transmission filter out of it, which is that there. And... Uh, it's actually a not too bad of a spot to get to. I mean, it's pretty clear when it drains, it should run right straight down into the pan and uh, should be able to get some a wrench on that thing to unscrew it. Let's get my uh, pliers on this and see if I can't break this one loose. Oh yeah, come off nice. Well, the engineer's got it right on this one. Runs right straight down into a pan. Doesn't run all over everything. There, I think we'll just leave it at that and let that uh, drain out for a minute. Do oil around that rubber seal. You do that so it doesn't uh, dry rot on there and make it impossible to get off. The rubber seal is what's supposed to seal it from uh, leaking. The oil is what's supposed to make it so you can get it off again. 
I guess it is kind of important to make sure that you get a little bit of oil around that and then I like to put a little bit of it in the can too just to get into the paper portion of the filter all right one last time make sure it's good and clean and get the filter up there and let's get her on all right nothing dripped we're good to go remember hand tighten these things don't use a tool you'll never get it off again Today's date, 960 hours. Now, there is one more thing in the manual it says to do. And there's a wire screen inside of here. So it's got these three bolts. Have to take that off, pull it out. And I'm sure I'm going to have to slip it off of this tube to get that out of the way. Because that's a, a metal tube. It's not uh, a rubber hose. But get that out of the way and then get that screen out. So we'll see if I can't get these nuts broke loose and get that off of there Well, that's quite the screen. It just says to use some uh, solvent cleaner or something like that. I think we use brake cleaner on it, get it cleaned up and air dried off. And doesn't look like there's a whole lot of metal in it. We want to make sure that we clean it, I think, from the inside, blowing it out. So let's get that cleaned up and... I might stick my vacuum hose in there and get some more of that oil out of that. All right, got the filter all cleaned up. Just use some brake cleaner on that. Um, it's got a little bit of a locating end on it, if you will. And I know you guys won't be able to see it, but down inside of there, this uh, end here mates into part of the casting down there. And there's an O-ring around this end here for the seal around the other part of the end cap. And what that does is is it forces you able to go through the filter and or the screen and out rather than uh, going around it. So that's why there's that O-ring there. And we'll get that slid up on there. Get that back in location. Feels like it's seated in the right spot. Put the bolts back in it. got all the uh, plugs put back in, all of the filters on, all the drain uh, holes and everything all tightened up and we're going to go ahead and put the four and a half gallons of the high guard transmission and hydraulic oil into this. But before I get into doing that, I did want to talk to you guys about doing your own service, doing your own maintenance on your tractors and things like that. Uh, some people have the option to be able to do it themselves. Or the knowledge or the tools and others uh, elect to take it to the dealer and do it one thing I wanted to discuss is some of the some of the things that I found and for an example I did an oil change on my uh, Honda element and I usually do all my own oil changes on all the vehicles that we have around here and one thing that I found with that was I uh, assumed that doing it myself was going to be cheaper and when i went and i purchased the the motor oil and a filter for it it came to i think it was right about 36 dollars and as i walked out of the auto parts store i kind of thought man that uh that seemed kind of expensive and so i got home and i decided to make a phone call to the local uh honda dealership and ask them what an oil and filter change costs. 
and they gave me a price of $22 and I said is that with filter change as well and they said yep and right then I realized boy I'm doing this wrong I should have had the uh, dealer do it but in that particular instance where they're doing just one type of thing and uh, say an oil change or a filter change and quick in and out and they're set up to do those kind of things then yes generally it is cheaper to do that and sometimes it's worth having a dealership do those type of changes but the nice thing about this tractor is was when i got it i got all the service records from it and i've got a whole a whole stack of them over there and i was looking through all these and i basically did a very similar service to what they would do uh except for the front gear oil which really wasn't a whole lot but in some of these other ones they changed the plugs out and so on but as i was going through these different service records i see a labor cost of 323 dollars there and $280 up there. There was a total of $402 on labor on that one. And $327 of labor on this one. So I guess without going through every single one of these, I think you see where I'm going with this when you get into doing more and more things for servicing a piece of equipment or a vehicle sometimes it is very beneficial to uh, know how to do these things to have the tools to do them and most of this stuff that i'm doing is not difficult not difficult at all you can watch a youtube video you can uh, get some help or get some advice from a friend or uh, whoever it might be but if you have some general tools in your garage and a space to do it why saving anywhere from two to four to five hundred dollars in labor costs it is definitely well worth it to me in my opinion um, just take a, a evening or a weekend and go through a, a tractor like this and do the service on it and yes the uh, the uh, liquids and uh, filters and everything were expensive like i said earlier i mean i was at 268 dollars for for the oils and filters i did on that but i figure that would have probably doubled if not tripled when you would add the uh, dealership labor costs on so just wanted to throw that in there and uh, give you some advice or some some thought to think about hey, maybe I can do some of these things myself and maybe a friend could help you or whatever it takes. Let's get back to uh, topping off this hydraulic fluid and then we're going to move on to the uh, front axle gear oil. So I uh, removed both the front tires on this thing just to make it a little bit easier. So I went ahead and I drained the oil out of the axle, which is a plug up front under here. All right, I got the uh, gear oil back in, and what I've come to find is fill this up, and it does have a way to get down through that spindle axle and into this, the spindle. So as you fill this up to the right height, that vent hole or the breather hole there, actually the oil fills up to that. So when the oil is just a little bit below the threads of that uh, plug hole there, you are just about at your correct level on the front axle. So I've got... Um, like I said on both sides there's the the plug and on the back side of each one there's a drain for those so drain the oil out of here drain the oil out of the the bottom of the spindles and replaced all that and everything's put back together so I think uh, what I'm gonna do is probably gonna go out and drive the tractor around for a little bit make sure get it all warmed up and that uh, all the fluids are correct again so i'll go back and recheck those after i run it for a little while but uh i guess uh this isn't one of those more exciting videos it's not one of the the videos that uh, i guess is for everyone but i'm gonna always try and put some kind of tip or something that makes it my life a little bit easier in these videos so i guess i'm gonna wrap this one up i'm gonna take the tractor out give it a run around the yard if you like the video give me a thumbs up 
drop a comment if uh, this video even uh, interests you at all. But uh, we'll try and do some more inside the shop and outside in the yard. So I uh, will see you again soon. Thanks.